Praise the Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and we're glad in it, giving God praise for another glorious day that God has blessed us to be able to see and to have life. And I don't know about you, I'm grateful and thankful about it. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. A big old shout out to our military personnel all around the world. A big shout out to college students. I know many of you college students. I get reports all the time of college students who join us and I want to give you a shout out today. I'm going to be ministering today in part three of our series on spiritual warfare and I think this is one of the most important messages that believers can get to understand that it is a battle. It is it is a fight and we are fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in, in, high, in heavenly places and God gives us weapons, the weapons that we are to wear and to put on and to engage in. And we're going to do part three today of that series. Get your Bible, paper, and pencil, or whatever, however you take notes. Take some great notes, because I believe it's going to help your life. God bless you. Have a great day and a fabulous week. Bless the name of Jesus, your name. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Thank you for being the God that has delivered us and saved us. And we worship you. We praise your name. We glorify you. We honor you. We humble ourselves before you. We give you all of the praise and all of the glory. We worship your holy name. We pray today. We come today, God, praying that your will would be done in our lives. That you would rule and reign. That you would call the shots that order our steps. And we're praying today that you order the steps of some unsaved lo loved ones that we are bringing their name before your altar and asking you to invade their life. Let the Holy Spirit arrest them wherever they are, whatever they're doing. Transform their lives and change them in the name of the Lord. And God, while we pray today, we pray for one another. We pray that you meet the needs of my brother, my sister, whatever they stand in the need of, whatever, uh, whatever they need, God. Somebody needs a financial blessing. Somebody needs healing in their body. Somebody needs deliverance for their family. Whatever the need is, Father, we're praying that you would grant it and meet it in Je Jesus' name. We confess our sins and acknowledge our transgressions. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that forgives us of all of our sins. I pray today a, a hedge of protection around this sanctuary that you would rebuke every distracted spirit and every demon from hell. God, rebuke them today. And let your kingdom be established and your name be in charge in Jesus' name. Bless our time in your word. Speak to us through your word, almighty God. Challenge hearts. Encourage hearts. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. You can keep standing since y'all don't ever stand. And, you know. and I'm going to read Ephesians 6 starting at verse 10. Amen. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Say, put on that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks or the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. I want to talk about the breastplate of righteousness today. You can be seated. This is, uh, I think it's part three. Is it three? Okay. Y'all keep better notes than me. It's part three, and we're going to talk about 
the breastplate of righteousness. I wish I had um, the ability to uh, review everything we've covered so far, but I'm not going to be able to do that today. Uh, what I ultimately uh, want you to do is, if you, if you weren't here, if you was backsliding and, and not at church over the last s several weeks, if Pillow Pentecostal took you over, if Bedside Baptist <laughs> held you down and you weren't here, you need to get the, the messages. I want to encourage you to do that. So today we're on this third piece, and I talked last week about all of the pieces following the belt of truth attached to the belt of truth. The way the Roman soldiers wore their, their, uh, their armor, everything attached to the belt, everything attaches to truth. Everything is rooted and grounded in truth. And you gotta, you gotta get that message if you don't get any other of the other messages. Everything has to be grounded in truth. But this breastplate is an important part. It's interesting that it's the second piece that the scriptures mention uh, because the breastplate, uh, when a Roman soldier put on a breastplate, when he put on his armor, the breastplate protected, check this out, his front and his back. And his side. Yes. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you got to get your back protected because, you know, there's some backstabbers. <laughs> what, what, the OJ, was it the OJs? Yes. What, what, what did they say? They smiling in your face. All the time they want to take your play. See, the 12 o'clock crowd ain't gonna know that song. That's for us old farts. Come on, somebody. That's back in the day when they made music. <laughs> That's back in the day when the music had a message. That's back in the day. They didn't call women names back in those days. Yeah, that was a, they had a music, they had a message there. And, um, and the breastplate protected vital organs. Vital organs, important thing. Uh, one of the things the scripture teaches us is that the natural elements in life teaches us truth about the spiritual elements of life. And so um, the, the heart is in, is in a vital organ that pumps blood through the body, five quarts of blood through your body every 60 seconds get pumps through your body. Uh, your lungs carries oxygen, your, the kidneys filter out poisons, toxins, and waste. The liver produces substances that breaks down fats uh, and converts sugar to energy. Your intestines, small and large, helps absorb food and helps eliminate waste. And, and how many of y'all know each one of these things, that's what it does physically, but it plays a part in your life. There's a spiritual component as well. So, you, so, so in a spiritual way, um, the breastplate uh, protects your vital organs, your, your, the, the things that you need spiritually. So let me give you an example. Uh, it says in here that the kidneys filter out poisons and toxins in the spirit realm, you have a spiritual kidney that helps you weed out stuff that you hear that ain't true, that's not good for you. Some of y'all believe everything that you hear, just because I had to tell my wife all the time, just because it's on the internet don't mean it's true. Just because it's in a book don't mean it's true. Anybody can write a book. That joker sitting next to you could write a book. And go ahead and look at them. They don't know what they're talking about when they're writing a the book. So you, you need, some, you need some, some elements in your life to help you weed out what's true and what's not true, especially as it pertains to your spiritual growth and development. Yeah. Um, every now and then I get a letter from... Um, a person who says, I'm no longer a member of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I now attend Kingdom Hall for Jehovah's Witnesses. So they teach them in the Jehovah's Witnesses to write a letter to your church that you're not a member. 
no more, and that you're never, never going to come back into the building. Uh, and then sometimes they'll go on and say they've come into the truth. Now, let, me, let me explain something to you. When a person leaves the teaching of the gospel and embraces an untruth, and then they try to say it's because we're not teaching the truth. The real truth is you never put yourself in an environment to learn what the truth was. Yeah, y'all clapping now, but some of y'all in here ain't never been to Bible study. You don't know what a Bible study look like. You ain't never take no classes. You ain't never, you've never put yourself in an environment to further develop yourself. And so you are subject to being plucked off. Now, as a member of this church, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just rambling right now, but the truth of the matter, I don't know why I'm saying this. I guess the Lord is leading me to talk to somebody while I'm saying this. It ain't got nothing to do with my message today. Um, you know, uh, I was going to say something profound. and it's, You know, when you get old, if you don't say it right then. <laughs> and it was important, too, whatever it was. Oh, 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 here it is, I got it, I got it. The Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that Jesus is God. If you go to any environment where they try to tell you that Jesus is not God, you need to have a filter to be able to tell you, I don't need to be around this environment. Okay. Jehovah, a Jehovah Witness tried to tell me that only 144,000 people is going to heaven. My God, my God. You know what I said? The devil is a liar. That's right. That's right. That's right. My Bible said, whosoever will, whoever believes. And then they had the audacity to tell me I wasn't one of them. Why would I be a part of an organization or a religion or a belief system that heaven is limited to just certain people. That's not what the, if you don't know the Bible, you, somebody can tell you that and you can believe that. So here's, okay, let me get back to the message here today. So my point, I, I, the point I was making is you need to protect, the breastplate protects those elements, those, those spiritual in, things in your life that helps you weed out what's not healthy or good for you. And you need that in your life to be able to know um, what's true and what's not true. And so the breastplate, I'm shouting because it covers your, your front, your back, and your side. Yeah. Glory to God. So what does it mean? What does it, the breastplate of righteousness mean? What is it? It's a, it's a, it is a breastplate. But the Bible further defines for us so we can know what it means. Now let me start off by telling you the word righteousness means... Listen to this, jot this down, write this down, tweet this, Instagram this, Snapchat this, what else? Twitter this, tweet this, Instagram, what else? Facebook this, whatever, put it on social media. Righteousness means to be in right standing with God. Somebody say right standing with God. It means to be in the right standing with God. Now, what I love about the scriptures, if you don't know what something means in the scripture, the scripture will define itself for you. And in, write this, jot, jot this verse down, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 8. It further defines for us what the breastplate of righteousness is. But let us, who are of the day, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate here it is of faith and love and has a helmet the hope of salvation I want you to see that it defines what the breastplate is and what it mentions are two things that are essential to your life your spiritual life faith and love 
Somebody say faith and love. Faith and love. These two components, and I want to. This is what the, 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 if you if you don't have these things, you cannot be in right standing with God. So what does that tell me? Here's what that tells me, and here's what I need you to understand. These are going to be the two areas that the devil's going to seek to attack in your life. If he can get you questioning God. If he can make you doubt God's ability to step into your situation and bring about resolution, healing, or deliverance, if he can talk and get you to question God, he has won the battle. And this is, and here's, here's what my point to you all is today, is that God says, Hebrews 11, 6, jot, just, just jot it down, without faith it's impossible to please God. Faith is what moves God. God. Faith is what causes God to act on your behalf that you would dare believe God. Uh, and, and what I've learned in my life is in my past, I went through some stuff in my past. And I learned that in my past, somebody say my past. In my past, I went through some things in my past that I saw God work out. I saw God. So how many of y'all know there's some stuff that you, wait, don't clap yet. How many of y'all know there's some stuff that, that has happened in your life that you know could nobody have done that but God? It had to be God. It had to be a power greater than me. It had to be, it couldn't, it wasn't the bank, it wasn't my boss, it wasn't nobody that I knew. Only God could have worked that out. Only he could have did that. And what I know about my past is God allows me to go through those things in my past so that my faith can be built up so that the next thing I face, I say, well, God brought me out back then. I know he'll bring me out right here. Let me see how he's going to work it out now. And then he works that out. So now I got two things under my belt. And then the next thing I face, I say, now he done worked out number one and number two. I know he ain't going to bring me to number three. And y'all ain't hear what I'm saying to you. What I'm trying to tell you is that my past builds me up to have confidence in my future and my present. Go ahead, high five yourself and say, I believe God. He's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. He's a problem solver. I trust God. I believe God. We used to sing a song. Let me sing, let me sing an old song that y'all don't, don't know. Some of y'all might know this song. Uh, the young people at 12 won't know this song. Here's how it goes. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. That sounds so good. We got to sing that again. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. And, and here's the fact of the matter that's exactly where I'm posted that's exactly where I live that's exactly where I stand I, I got too much experience with God for you to try to make me doubt him I've seen him work miracles in my past and I know he will work miracles in my present and in my future Somebody tell your neighbor, I got faith. Faith that God can move mountains. Faith that he can work a miracle. Faith that he can solve my problems. Faith that he can heal my body. Faith that he can meet my need. Faith, I believe God.
Sit down. So listen. Sometimes you just have to say to yourself, I believe God. <laughs> I believe God, I believe God, I, I believe God, I, I believe God, I, I know he will, I trust him. Glory to your name. Woo. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Now, my, my breastplate, my breastplate of faith helps me ping off all of the suggestions of the devil that tries to make me think that there is no God, that God doesn't care about me and my situation or my circumstances. He can't fix my problem. All of those are lies from the devil. But my, my breastplate of faith makes it fall off the wayside. Go ahead, tell your neighbor, I believe God. Tell him, I done come too far to doubt God now. I done seen him work too many things out. And, and guess what? I don't know if y'all want to confess to this, but, but the real miracles are such that you're too embarrassed to tell somebody what he did for you. Yeah. You, you can't tell the real story. You know, because it's going to put you in such a bad light. We, we tell people the, the, the stories that we can share. Go ahead, act like, look straight ahead, act like I ain't talking about you. But everybody got something that they can't, they God did for you that you ain't even told nobody about. You can't tell nobody about it. They wouldn't even hang out with you no more if they know what God did for you. That you got yourself in a situation that you should have never been in in the first place. Y'all go ahead, look straight ahead, look straight ahead. And you can't testify that God brought you out of it. He fixed it, he worked it out. You can't even testify about that. That's why you can't, you can't, you don't have to beg me to worship God. I, I, I told... I told uh, Minute, Reverend Hurd, Stephen Hurd, our music and arts person recently, I said, tell the praise and worship leaders, stop cheerleading. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need Preach. people coming. Come on, come on. You don't got to ask me. Preach. When I entered into his gates, I had Thanksgiving on my heart. And, and wait a minute. Y'all got me. 
I, y'all got me stuck. I'm trying to get off of faith. I got to go to love. I told him, I, if, if, if you have to make me worship God, if you are responding to the praise and worship leader, that's not a praise that God gives glory out of. But if you worship God, because in your heart you know he's worthy, and he deserves it. And you believe God. Yeah, God moved. That's how God works miracles. I told Reverend Heard, tell them to take, come on, come on, come on, out their vocabulary. Amen. Let the people who don't want to worship sit down and watch. If you don't think God's been good enough for you to open your mouth and raise your hand, sit down. They got me going this morning. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think about what he's done, Think about what he brought me through. When I think about the miracles he's wrought, when I think about the prayers he's answered. Okay, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. And I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me.
hands on it. Come on. It's the sound of victory. Hey, 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 hey. of his goodness what he's done for me when i think of his goodness and how he set me free i can dance 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 dance, dance, dance all night oh. Somebody's here today, and it's not an accident that God brought you here today. Come on now. You are surrounded by people who know that God is alive and well. Amen. And you have doubts, and you have questions, and you're not sure. We can help you get sure. We can move you from the doubt arena all the way to the believe arena. There's somebody here today, you're not, you're not in right standing with God. You're not righteous before him. We need to get that right with God. Just make your way out. Come out here. Just leave where you're standing and make your way here right to this altar now. The Lord Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Right now, right now, right now will be the time to come and say yes to the Lord, yes to Jesus. If you're not, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus, I ain't talking about you join church. I'm talking about you had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Come right now, come. If you're not sure, you want to get assurance, come right now. If you backslid, you drifted away, and you want to be restored, come right now, right this moment, right this instance. Or you already saved, but you want to join the church. This is a great church. This is a wonderful church for you to be part of. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume. Sweet perfume. Your awesome presence. This is holy ground. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So come, so come and bow down. And bow down. Bow down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bow down and worship Him. Worship. Let's give the Lord a shout for these souls here today. behind you as a counselor they're going to take you to a, one of our rooms sit down talk with you find out where you are spiritually if you're getting saved if you're getting rededicating or if you have doubts they're going to give you steps to take to resolve that if you're already saved coming to join our church they will ask you a series of questions and give you a series of directions all right i'm so proud of you coming today so great let's pray Father, I thank you for these souls that have responded to your voice, have heard your voice, and I simply pray for you to work supernaturally in their life. Give them what they stand in the need of, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. Fill them with your spirit, plant them in your vineyard, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's just holy.